Hey everyone and welcome to this fifth CSS video where I'm going to quickly give you an outline of the document object model. Um, so the DOM model. Firstly, everything in CSS can be considered as a um, as a box, including where everything will have a, um, a margin, a border, padding and content. So let's put that into context here. Earlier we created three boxes inside one big box. Um, I made some changes between videos where I deleted all the content, all the text we had inside here, um, and I deleted where I previously had margins and paddings. So you see there's no space here. So first off, I'm going to show you margin. Um, so margin will determine, um, well, like it says, the area around the outside of the box. So if I gave this a margin of 10 pixels and refreshed here, you'll see that surrounding these boxes now has 10 pixels. Um, and you may notice that we've got a bigger gap between the boxes than we have between the top and bottom. The reason is each box has 10 pixels around it. So here we've got 20 pixels and here we've got 10. That's simple enough. Right, and I'm just going to select um, this wrapper to display inline block. And what this will do is um, make it just fit the content along here, like that. So now I can show you another example of margin. So we've seen here that margin 10 pixels has given it a 10 pixel around everywhere. But what if we want a longer pixel on the top and bottom than we do on the sides? Well, we can use... Um, theory of top, right, bottom, left to um, determine different widths. So we can have a fit, um, margin of 10 pixels on the top um, or let's say 20 on the top, um, 5 on the right, and no, 10 on the bottom and 5 on the left. So it always goes top, right, bottom, left. And if I save that and refresh it, you can see we've got top, right, bottom, left. Um, and another even quicker way of doing this is often you want the same amount of pixels to be on the top and bottom as you do on the left and right. So another thing we can do is top and bottom and then left and right. So now we're gonna have 20 pixels on the top and bottom and five pixels on the left and right. And we can see 20 pixels, 5 pixels, actually 10 pixels because we've got two lots of 5. This one is 5 pixels. So that is all straightforward. So next I want to show you, I think I'll put that back to 10. Well next I'm going to show you a bit about padding. So say we've got some contents in this box. Um, and some contents in that box, like that. Uh, it moved because I put it back to 10 pixels, by the way. Um, and you can see that this content is touching the edge of the box. Um, that doesn't look good. So for that, what we use is padding. Now padding is pretty much exactly the same as, pix as margin, except for we can use it on the inside of the box and not the outside. So if I did padding 10 pixels and then refresh, you can see the box has got bigger, um, but also we've now got 10 pixels between word, world and the edge. Um, and we can do the same trick as we did before with the top and right, bottom and left. Say we wanted padding um, on the top to be, I don't know, 30 pixels, that's a lot of padding, 30 pixels on the top and only two pixels on the left and right. So we've now got rectangles pretty much, but you can do that. Right, one more thing in the box model is for border. Um, border usually doesn't get in the way, but because it's only by default zero pixels and we can set it to, I don't know, one pixel solid. Um, I remember color, so let's have black. That's white. Yeah, I meant white. Um, but if you had something more, we can see it does actually manipulate the model. It's adding in this five pixels 
as well as for padding and as well as for margin. So there's a very quick introduction to the CSS box model. I hope that was helpful to you and please subscribe to my channel if you'd like more. Thank you.